After a good long stream of mediocre and watered-down vampire films, finally comes Fright Night, a movie where men are real men and vampires are real vampires. It manages to shine despite two strikes it might have against it right away. It's a vampire movie, and it's a remake, two things movie theaters have been inundated with in recent years, and it's generally hard for me to get excited about either. But Fright Night is one of those movies that knows it's good. It has an energetic, character-driven script, a cast that seems to love this material and all throw themselves into their roles, and a competent director who knows how to pace the comedy and the scares so that they're blended together seamlessly. I've never seen the original Fright Night, but it doesn't really matter. This movie sure doesn't feel like it's cashing in on that name because it doesn't seem to know it's a remake. There's a lot that's familiar here, but refreshingly so. Vampires had their teeth back, so to speak, excuse the pun, and Colin Farrell, one of my absolute favorite actors for a villainous role, is delightfully terrifying as the vampire who moves next door to our teenage protagonist, Charlie, played by the ever-versatile Anton Yelkin. It's been so long since I've seen traditional vampires on screen that they feel fresh again, and the movie seems to be making a point about this, as there's inevitably a Twilight comment from Charlie's best friend who tries to convince Charlie that vampires are real and there's one living next to him. We're told that these vampires aren't romantic, they're not relatable, they're just killers. They have to kill, but they also want to kill and they like to kill. While other vampire stories have tried to reinvent the vampire myth, playing up the notion that the vampires of their universe are scarier than anything you could possibly read about, Fright Night convincingly argues that perhaps they'd be scarier if they were exactly like what you would expect. Charlie goes to stage magician and expert on the occult, Peter Vincent, in a very funny performance from Doctor Who's David Tennant, who tells him that vampires can be killed in all the ways he's ever heard, stake through the heart, fire, etc. But knowing what it takes and having what it takes are two different things, and the main theme of the film is maturity through overcoming various kinds of fear, both primal fears and social fears. Blending horror and comedy is interesting and potentially fatal, because the worst horror films and the worst comedies have the same thing in common, flat characters and predictable stories, or no stories at all. Screams and laughs, when they don't come from following characters with depth, are pretty much the same thing cheap gags to evoke an immediate response, and then on to the next gag. I've seen so many horror films where the situation was the character. The meat of the thing is stuff jumping out at me or people being brutally killed in front of me. But this movie is about characters I'm invested in. It's not that formulaic horror movie where everyone gets killed one by one until one character remains, usually a girl, and often someone we didn't realize was even supposed to be the protagonist, but assume now that she must be because she's the one who made it out alive. How would we know? She's usually just like everyone else who died. Charlie wants to fit in with the popular kids at school, so he's turned into a jerk, avoiding his geeky friend so everyone else will like him. That leads him into trouble, and without spoiling anything, his attitude partly leads to someone getting killed. His character begins to deepen as he discovers the existence of vampires, and we watch him gradually and, I think, realistically grow up as he's forced to take charge and make difficult choices. I'm also impressed with his girlfriend, who is one of the popular kids, of course, that he's trying to impress, but isn't the airheaded stereotype we would expect. She's someone who refuses to be put in a box and commands respect from Charlie and from the audience. As I said, the vampires aren't humanized, and they can be a force of nature, because our good guys are actually people we care about. Colin Farrell plays Jerry like a deranged serial killer, who, in a particularly creepy scene, keeps a girl in a secret closet upstairs in his house and feeds on her periodically when he wants a snack, then returns to the living room to put his feet up and watch television. He's scary because we know he's been doing this for decades, maybe centuries. There's no reasoning with him. The movie isn't scary for the audience as much as it is for our heroes. We're taken along for a ride with them as they run from Jerry and later when they try to kill him. The action serves the story, especially in a long but exciting chase scene where Charlie, his girlfriend, and his mother try to get away from Jerry, all while Charlie still can't quite convince them that Jerry's a vampire. I found a lot of the early action to be unpredictable and thrilling, whereas much of the action in the third act I thought was more routine. David Tennant gets to be David Tennant, but that's not to say he's not a versatile actor. This character is nothing like Doctor Who, but his style strangely fits the always drunk and arrogant Vincent, who has a character arc that parallels Charlie's, and while I thought his backstory was too shoehorned in and convenient, he ultimately serves as an unexpected father figure for Charlie. 
The film has a certain quirkiness that often lightens the mood and gives us much-needed breathers after tense and gripping horror scenes. And I should mention that the intensity usually comes from the anticipation of terrible things happening rather than the terrible things themselves. I actually jumped the first time we see a vampire burst into flames. And I am a Buffy and Angel fan. I've seen a lot of vampires burst into flames. The comedy is rarely laugh out loud, though Tennant has his moments, and more often just makes me smile because these are real people with the full gamut of emotions. With such human characters in a vampire story, I shouldn't be surprised that the script was written by Marty Noxon, one of Buffy's showrunners and writer of a fair number of scripts for that show. This is one of those movies that has just the right people working on it. Everything seems to click. The final act is too predictable for my taste, and I'm not crazy about the overt CGI when the vampires are in full-on vampire mode. And, of course, there's a lot of vulgar language that seems to come with the territory for movies like this. Thankfully, the dialogue, for the most part, feels natural. I'm going to give Fright Night a 3.5 out of 4.